primarily about keeping uh, intellectual control of the software. So without it, it's very easy for complexity to just explode because the architecture is not fully understood, or people are simply busy to follow it, or it seems to be, you know, quicker and easier to do something else. Um, and if a lot of those changes layer on top of each other, you rapidly get into a position it's very difficult to change the software. Even managers talk in terms of layers. They may not call them layers, but they'll draw boxes on top of other boxes. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you see it in marketing brands, right? Yeah. Here's our product, we build on top of it with this, and then we've got this little bit on the side, and then you can buy this other thing on top. Mm. And th that's an immense value. I mean, the tool on its own, even if it just had that, would be useful. I'd say in percentage terms, Actually, nearly all the systems that I've had contact with have had some problems with dependency management at some point. Um, uh, some of them, uh, there's a Herculean effort to, to retrieve the situation. Some just become a big problem, and some get rewritten. Nearly yeah, every system I've come across runs into dependency management at some point. So it's a very common problem. The systems, if the, the real danger of them and why they die, I think, is that they collapse under their own weight. As you start to have more and more dependencies, it, it, it literally resembles that scientist with the big ball of wires. He's going, we just need to make one further connection and you connect it up like that. It's a big mess of wires and no one can understand that. Structuring is partially about flexibility to change things and, and switch things in and out. But it's also partially about giving us aid so that we, visual, oh, sorry, structuring aid so that we don't um, lose track of the system. Well, actually, I think in many cases people don't know the problem is there. Leave that they've got an architecture which was done you know, on a whiteboard or they've got a copy in their desk drawer and they believe the code complies with it very neatly. And then one of the most revealing things I've found is that when I'm doing an architectural assessment for somebody, I use Structure 101 and I'll show them the layering or lack of it that they've actually got and I'll get Structure 101 to generate the architecture diagram. Look at it and say, that's not my architecture. And I'll say, that actually is your architecture. You may not think it's your architecture, but that's, that's what, what it's evolved into. And then normally there's you know, hair stands on end and there's, there's general horror. <laughs> so it's quite a powerful demonstration of how things drift. It's just because you can't visualise all this mass of dependency detail quickly. Um, it's, it's quite hard to extract from code, but you know, we need the tools. I'll send uh, like at one point a 400,000 line code base, a large code base, and they're having trouble with it. It was a credit sanctioning system. So I pointed the tool at the code base and within a minute or so I had a set of architecture, a set of layers which showed me exactly what the, the different parts of the system were and so I mucked around with it before, looked at the classes, looked at what they were doing, looked at the bad dependencies and then within 20 minutes I was on the phone to the guy who sent me the stuff saying I see the problem, the problem is these two layers here, they're badly coupled, you don't know what each of the abstractions really mean and it's unclear as to why you've let these get too dependent on each other and, and he's a bit shocked because he'd only sent it to me the zip file or the share had just been given to me 20 minutes before and I'm on the phone telling him and it can be annoying right but at the same time he had given me a clear understanding of the structuring principles that they wanted in the system because it's very clever how it, it basically finds the the best way to layer it by looking at the the would mean the least number of dependency mm. violations and and that's what I mean by it, it's something which you can point at it and you have something which is useful to people in depth, but yeah. also a takeaway that you can get within five minutes that you could throw in front of a manager and say, that's the system, they're the layers in the system, this is the badness in the system, we need to fix it. That, that's where it scores over Sonar or J-dependent the fact that it shows you it's bad, but shows you what will happen before you touch the code. I don't need to mess around with packaging and rebuilding looking at getting structure one on one, I can shift it around in the tool. And that's so much faster. I can throw away five ideas in quick succession because they make it worse, and then home in on the one that might work. And understand that although I've introduced some tangles, it's a better position than I was in, and now I know exactly where the tangles are. We've had, I've had wild success, in fact, doing Structure 101 analyses for other development groups. Mm -hmm. So people, for example, we recently were trying to take a library, 
which is in theory completely independent of one system, and move it to be completely generic and used by another system. Mm -hmm. And it is awfully close to being totally independent of that system, but ah, not quite, it's, it, it turns out. And um, one of the architects working on it, uh, who didn't have to have Structure 101 license, emailed me and said, I, I know about Structure 101, could you see if it can help? And I sent mm -hmm. him back the, uh, an Excel export of all the dependencies on the picture, and he just, he, 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 his reply was priceless.